Mm, these camo for drenched Doritos are good. I got a fish right book. I got a fish right book. Circles. Circles, life, circles, squares, triangles, pyramids, rhombuses. Like we've been on this circles. trip for a long circles time. Circles remind me of pie. I love pie. It's Pizza been pie. three years. Bobby, what, what did pie. you book us on? Get it. The spooky Michigan Lake Rhombus? Michigan door. Oh, cool. Mom? There's Rhombus? another Dorito. <laughs> what? That's a geometry. Becky, look. Triangle. <laughs> I'm going to get him hungry. Oh, shit. Wait. How are we back again? Where's my circles? Bobby, why are you 95 years old? I'm old man now. Wait, Bobby, we were only gone for two and a half hours. Why are you a well-published author? What happened? I won all these awards. <laughs> 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 I like how that's where you went. Yeah, we we what were we gonna originally say? Greetings we... and salutations. <laughs> hey y'all, welcome to the rotation. Okay, but seriously, welcome to the rotation. I'm here with Bobby. What's the rotation? The free rotation. Yeah, we're not slaves anymore. <laughs> Wait, uh, uh, speak for yourself. Hi, Bobby. I'm Bobby. Yeah, we're here with Bobby, who has excellent pompadour hair. It's on point today. I got a cut. Oh, yesterday. yeah, you look good. Thank you. Yeah, and then we're here with Good Hair Becky. I got a taco cat. Did you see that? Uh, it's a kitty kitty. Meow, meow. Yeah, I'm quite familiar with your taco nah. cat. It's a fish taco. Ew. <laughs> I have grenade cat. Oh, yeah, you do. And I have nothing. Oh, like, like, we, my, like my inner heart. It's empty and black. We've got to get Bobby something for his microphone. Yeah. Give me a little plastic penis. No. Well, we're doing it now. Meow, meow. No, because then he'll just sit there and be like. <laughs> yeah, wish, wishing Moral and Spaney pieces. Okay, we're me. back. It's been <laughs> zero, it's been zero days. days since we've been. <laughs> now I'm going to make it a streak. Like, I'm just going to mention it every time yeah. now. We'll work it in. Hey, <laughs> taco cat. <laughs> Speaking uh, of tacos, Angie, what's your topic for today? <laughs> See, it's triangles again. It's not even a circle. But it's the Lake Michigan Triangle. Oh, wait. You got a whole bunch of different stuff, though, right? No, it's all about Lake Michigan Triangle. Oh, this is stuff that happened on Lake Michigan? Yeah, it's all Lake Michigan oh, stuff. Oh, shit. Damn. Okay. I, just, I was like, oh, okay. Never mind. Okay, right. let's and go. And she printed on that high-quality paper. It's yeah. It's thick. Yeah. With two Cs. It's dummy thick. Ooh, like Meow. Thanos. <laughs> so, the Lake Michigan Triangle spans from Manitowoc. Bless you. Wisconsin <laughs> to Ludington, Michigan. Excuse you. And south to Benton Harbor. That sounds tasty. Yeah. The thing about the Lake Michigan Triangle is it has way more mysterious disappearances and strange occurrences than the Bermuda Triangle. Really? Yeah. Way more ships have gone and 40 known aircraft oh. have gone missing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like, the first in the American history was reported back in 1891. So when a schooner. Schooner. A schooner. A schooner. A shoe? I think it's schooner. A schooner. You know what? This is a boat. Why do you always pick the episodes that have the hard words in it? Well, the Crusaders were on this because it lets us make inside jokes for the or running gag for the rest. Yeah. Of the oh podcast. yeah, that makes people have to listen to our podcast to understand exactly. it. continuity. It's a See? very exclusive club, guys. Circles, circle, circle, circle it's a triangle of life. in a circle. But a, a schooner, na- schooner named Thomas Hume set off for lumber. Okay. Now, what's interesting is. Well, it's not interesting that the ship crashed and no trace of it or its crew was ever found. Well, that's actually kind of interesting. <laughs> it was a wooden ship. Okay. A wooden ship has floating debris. It's yeah. Wood. It floats oh, yeah, on the yeah. surface. No debris was ever found either. It literally was just gone. Termites. Giant termites. Oh, oh my God. Lake Michigan has kaiju and its termites. Oh. And then in 1921, a ship named the Rosabel, um, 11 people inside the Rosabel ship disappeared. And the ship was found overturned. Now, what's interesting is it looked like it had been in a crash, but no other ship had been in this crash with the Rosa Bell. So, it basically, was it like like it had hit another ship or just hit something in the water? No, it, it had, like, damage like it had been hit by another ship. 
Oh. So I guess the point of impact and the way it overturned, but there were no people ever found. Maybe it was a flying ship. And no other ship report exactly. And no other ship reported that they had had an accident on Lake Michigan in mm-hmm. or around that time. Or in 1921, it was the Germans because we're in World War I. Okay, I was thinking that too. Really? Mm-hmm. Can't, isn't there a way to get to Lake Michigan? Like there's like a, a river that passes through the northern states that get into it or it flows into it? Mm, I think through Lake Huron. Oh. But. And then, they, then, then the ship grows legs and walks over to Lake That's Michigan. That's what I was thinking. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Listen, if there's like 40 things missing, there's something obviously wrong happening that mm-hmm. like doesn't have an explanation. So here's the thing I was telling Becky. The next disappearance is Captain Donner. Now, what I take away from this is if you were ever on a trip where the captain in any way is named Donner, just don't go. That's what I was going to ask. Like, is he related <laughs> to the whole Donner party <laughs> yeah. incident? Yeah. Because that'd be fucking bananas. Yeah. So, Cannibalism. Uh, that's, I mean, this, he probably got cannibalized, which is what happened. They're like, just say he disappeared. Don't <laughs> tell him we ate him. Tasty. So April 28, 1937, he vanished from his cabin after guiding oh. the ship through icy waters. He'd gone to his cabin to rest. And about three hours later, a crew member went to alert him that they were near in port. He didn't answer the door. The door was locked from the inside. So they're thinking, you know, he's having a medical emergency. Yeah. He died. No, they cannibalized him. That's not a fact. (laughs) He cannibalized himself. Yeah. Uh, That is a fetish. Is it really? It's called Vore. I think it's called (laughs) Vore. Look it up. It's fun. Yeah. Remember that? Oh, yeah. The Bigfoot stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So a crew member broke into broke down the door only to find the cabin was empty he disappeared from a locked room with no windows oh wait i was about to say was there any windows because he could have just jumped out maybe he committed suicide so my thing is if i'm a crew member and my captain's door's locked i'm not trying to break it down he's probably rubbing one off real quick he's probably lonely he wouldn't like michigan icy waters but in theory aliens aliens or he fell into like dimensional rift Mm-hmm. Now, but so there was no windows in this room mm-hmm. whatsoever. No, he just disappeared. How could that happen? Right, just like those eleven people disappeared, and the whole ship, the Thomas Hume disappeared. Now, were they all in maybe this? Were they in the same area that all of this was happening? In the triangle. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. They, these all happened directly in the triangle. See, this is why I've always said geometry is evil. It's the worst subject to take I in agree. school, and it's confusing. Yeah. I argue that trigonometry is worse. It's just mm-hmm. hard. I liked trig. The trig wasn't bad. A geometry mm. I still can't understand. How does there four sides to a triangle? I don't get it. I like tr- <laughs> geometry because <laughs> it helps me play pool. It's like, I need a 35 degree angle to hit this ball this way. I thought you were going to say because you have a penis and you got to know angles so you can do it right. That I learned that from watching porn. Yeah. Not from school. God, no. I just watched yeah. porn at the desk on my phone. I feel like your teacher taught you that. And now I've built up a whole fan fiction about you and you're one of your teachers. Name Mr. Berkeley. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. Now that has got a weird fetish. Okay. So this next one is one of the weirdest to me. Okay. So it happened in 1950 uh, on Northwest Flight 2501, carrying 58 people crashed into Lake Michigan. Okay. That seems pretty, you know, relatively a lot of planes crashed around this time. Yeah. No, they didn't. This was considered <laughs> the deadliest commercial airliner accident in American history for, for the time. What was weird about this is the pilot had just requested that he be allowed to descend to 2,500 feet because there was a horrible electrical storm causing, uh, like, huge winds to lash over the water and stuff, and they were getting caught up in it. And then, right after that, it disappeared. Oh. So they're assuming it crashed into the lake because it just disappeared off the radar. Well, two hours after that last communication, two police officers, you know, they're scanning the bank trying to find the plane, said they reported a red light floating over Lake Michigan for about 10 minutes. So a lot of people are now thinking, okay, UFO. Yeah. What was interesting about this plane, it was a DC-4 turboprop, which means it has four engines. Oh, yeah. Two engines can fail, and it'll still be fine. You could technically lose, like, two and a half engines. I mean, these were made to withstand major upheavals and adverse situations. (laughs) Upheavals (laughs) even have a magic card. Yeah. Oh, now we know where the magic card came from. So what, six mana bounce all night land permanence? Something like that? Yeah. yeah, that's why the airplane disappeared. Someone had the blue... It, it was over a lake, so they had the blue mana to do it. Oh, shit. Yeah. You're right. The plane was never found. Oh, shit. They reopened in 2018 the search for the plane Northwest Airlines did, and they still can't find it. 
But in the course of looking for this plane, they found 10 shipwrecks. That Holy shit. We're n- some of them are, are incredibly old. We're talking like Viking ships. Like oh, just shit. Incredibly old ships fr- from back when the ocean really did pour into Lake Michigan before it was sealed off and became freshwater. And it's all within the same area in this triangle. Quacker Jack attacked me. It's been a long time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just a bit. But that's crazy. Ten fucking ships, including Vikings. And they, But, yeah, they still couldn't find the aircraft. Still couldn't find the aircraft. Now, was it like, were they anticipating that it was going to land on actual land or was it going to be landing in the water? No, it was over Lake Michigan. So, and it just vanished off the radar. Now, keep in mind, the Lake Michigan radar is LaGuardia. I mean, it's, oh, I'm sorry, it's O'Hare International Airport in um, Chicago. Yeah. So, this isn't like a small airline keep, uh, a small airport keeping up with it. It's O'Hare and the military also monitors there because there's a lot of bases around that area. Yeah. And it disappeared off everybody. It was just gone. I think I know what happened. What? It wasn't UFOs. Everyone on the plane said, duh bears. And it shimmered uh, out of existence. Mm, they said it all at the same time. Yep. It shimmered out of existence. And yeah. then, um, what's his face is born? Dick, Mike Dicka was born from that. Other oh, combined tortured souls. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that would that be that's bad. my fucking theory, and I'm that sticking makes to it. How old is Mike Dicta, by the way? Because this happened in 1950. Uh, it would be about that time. Oh. He's, he's still he's old enough to be a racist prick. That's yeah. true. You know what? He this very well could have been it. The tinfoil hat theories are coming out strong today. They should. So while they've been looking for all the, these missing planes and ships, in 2007 they found something interesting. It was an underwater Stonehenge. Ooh. Wait, what? Yeah, Lake Michigan had Stonehenge. So the 40-foot ring of rocks resting underneath Lake Michigan has a very similar arrangement to Stonehenge as well. So that's why they could pinpoint it because it was set exactly like Stonehenge. Well, almost exactly. Right. It had like more of an outer ring. You know, Stonehenge has fallen. Right. So these hadn't and fallen. And yet. these, well, these hadn't fallen too. And if you think about it, Stonehenge has had a lot of like tourism to it. So yeah. it's probably eroded a lot a, a, more. From people just touching it yeah. over the years. Now, what was interesting about this is one of the rocks on the outer ring has a carving of a mastodon. Now, mastodons have been extinct for about 10,000 years. That just puts in perspective how old this partic- this would make this the oldest Stonehenge found. There's Stonehenge found in Lake Huron, too. So we're focused on Lake Michigan, but Lake Huron has pretty much a lot of the same types of things as Lake Michigan, except for the triangle. So, I mean, theoretically, what they're thinking is that when there was no water in this area, this mm-hmm. is when the Stonehenge was right. created. And then when uh, probably the sea level started coming over. Yeah. That's, okay. And so Bobby hit on something interesting when he talked about um, the bears? The bears. <laughs> well, it's blinking out of existence because some of the theories, other than UFOs, because there have been a lot of UFO sightings around this area, but some claim that the triangle is a time portal that can bend time, calling the cause of metaphysical force with a supernatural vortex of energy. Some say, oh, it's the extreme weather on Lake Michigan, but then the people come back and be like, whoa, what the fuck causes the extreme weather? Right. Yeah. Because it's only in this triangle. Exactly. And if you have extreme weather, you're going to find plane debris. Mm-hmm. Right. right. And it's not a lake. And, like, yes, Lake Michigan is one of the bigger lakes. I mean, it's not even really a lake. It's almost to, can be cal- classified as a sea at some yeah. points. But the fact that of the matter is that it's not like a vast Atlantic or Pacific Ocean where you could lose something and it could you might never find it. This yeah. is a small area that they're yeah. talking about. Right. It's not nearly as big. The Bermuda Triangle is most well known because it's enormous. Yes. It covers it, it, – it's multi-country – Right. You know, multi-island. And so it's more focused on because, you know, it's just bigger. Lake Michigan is just in the U.S. and It's confined into that, like, area where it is in the northwest. Right. Um, so there's an anomaly here that was discovered. So as they were researching the stone hinges, they found what they call the Lake Superior anom- Anomaly. Even called its Lake Superior, it is found in Lake Michigan. So an island protrudes from the watery depths. And this island has been sacred for thousands of years. It's been considered sacred. It's called Isle Royale, or Minong, as the Native Americans referred to it. And it's held spiritual significance and unimaginable mineral mineral resources. So, you know what minerals found here? Don't look at the cheat sheet. I'm not looking. What is it? Copper. Oh. oh. I was going to go with um, uranium. And I was it's quartz. an incredibly pure form of copper. So, here's an interesting thing. Copper is known to deflect negativity, increase blood flow, and it's also associated with the divine and attributed to the queen of heaven. 
okay, we, I mean, that's just spiritual properties. But what is we? what do we use copper for in today's day and age? For Electricity. Wires. Conduction. Yeah. yeah. And remember the electrical storm that the plane went through? Right. It makes sense that there would be huge electrical storms because you've got a huge island that's just made of copper. Well, and then that also explains that maybe throughout the lake itself that there is copper running through the right. lake. It's, so if it's, it's an incredibly deep lake. Right. So if it's conducting electricity during a storm, it probably mm-hmm. is more of a yeah. an anomaly that where you have a catalyst, a bigger right. catalyst for electrical storms. And say storms. that the island was there. It's a big copper island. It could be powering something. Like oh, here we go. Yes. Oh, <laughs> here we go. So, estimates place that half a billion pounds of copper have already been mined from the island. Holy and they shit. still haven't reached the bottom. It seems like the whole island is just copper. Can you imagine the people who, like, the basic... That's just in ancient times, by the way. Well, I was about to say, think about the basic people now who, like, go in, yeah. like, go into houses that are un- un- unconstructed right. and steal the copper wire. Yeah. Like, Ooh, gotta make some money. Go into this island. You're a millionaire. Exactly. Yeah. And this mining operation has been placed back 6,500 years ago, so they don't mine on it anymore. But while they were researching the ancient mining operation, there was an anomaly that was discovered completely out of place. So, see, you're thinking the island is the anomaly. No, it gets better. Okay. Google Earth, when it was using, uh, they used Google Earth to obtain an aerial view of McCargo Cove, which that's the ancient cove. It's always been called McCargo, which is weird. And there's an enormous structure that's seen underneath the water. So the thing about this is no matter how much you search on it, information about this is just gone. We know they found it, and then it was just gone. All the information has been taken away. I smell a cover up. Right. So now, <laughs> and th- so it was discovered five years ago. We've been looking for information on it. You can't find it. So several ideas have been tossed around, including it could be a cometary or meteor impact site, which because it is pushed up. Mm-hmm. So it's oblong. Um, it has an opening on the top and the bottom, and uh, it, it, it's very geometric. So, like almost shaped. a crater, and that it, that's the pushed up part from the lake. Yeah, that's what they're thinking. It's it's more oblong than it is round, so it doesn't have that round impact of a comet. Mm-hmm. But it, it it maybe if it skidded. Yeah. So some people think that, or they think it's volcanism, which volcanism isn't the same as like an underwater volcano. It's where way back when when the tectonic plates collided it created these dips yeah so instead of going up this one went down to make room for itself hmm. and uh, we know that happened because we remember when the ocean used to go into lake michigan there's yeah. tons of signs of that or it could be an ancient mega mound site like the burial mounds yeah um some people say it's an atlantean harbor mining operation they think that the atlantans used this to mine copper holy shit the atlanteans are the, everywhere remember atlantis was actually placed somewhere like Greece said it was off the coast of Greece. Like, they could look out and see it, but that it moved. So Atlantis would come and go. Mm-hmm. So hmm. from the few writings we have by Socrates, we know that Atlantis wasn't always there. It would come and go. It's my favorite Disney movie. Yeah, I really like that one, too. It's good. You get Michael J. Fox not sh- uh, shaking his ass off in a film. <laughs> I'm uh, so mean. Oh, but I was going to say a lot of times, you know, even in the Devil Sea, they did attribute that there was possible Atlantean activity in right. Japan. And we know that there's those pyramids powering something. And now we have a huge copper island. Like, what, you, what is all this? Well, then you got to wonder, like, when the ocean, like, covered the earth, like, did it just opposite affect everything where, like, certain p- land masses that were there mm-hmm. suddenly were covered in water? And now we have oh, that so on the going, opposite. You're going backwards. The earth used to be covered completely in water. Right. It's land that came out of it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we do have things shifting around, and the like water, water is reclaiming it. Especially when you consider what's happening in Greenland just yesterday. What happened in Greenland? Well, they had um, 24 tons of glacier melted. 24 tons of glacier melted. Yeah. And now they've lost land. Like, the water has reclaimed it. And they say global warming's not real. Exactly. Silly. Well, they, yes. well, the theory is that if you, a certain amount, I think it was like 1,500 tons is what they were saying, that that amount would co- start to cover sea levels within North America, like the mm-hmm. United States. So c- cities that were on the sea would be like overcome with water. Right. So, I mean, we, we're we always focused on California and the earthquakes. We need to focus on New York and Michigan and uh, Massachusetts and them. New Orleans, Louisiana, yeah. Yeah, they're the ones in the most danger. So is the Georgia coastline. Georgia coastline, but Georgia is one of the few states that they've determined would survive. Well, An yeah. Ice age, um, 
a flooding. Well, that's because sort of, of the way the topography is toward the mid yeah. and north Georgia is yeah. that it's higher we're up. So high. It's we're just going to mm-hmm. lose the coastal uh, cities yeah. that would if there was ever a, um, mm-hmm. an ice, which would affect an, how Georgia grows and what we can grow. Mm-hmm. Right. But um, can so, we still grow, grow peaches? Well, you know, Georgia doesn't really grow peaches. It's Florida. What? It's then why is it called a fucking Georgia peach? I'm calling Georgia. the police yeah. right now. It should have been. Well, it's really right hard now. to say onions. Like the onion state, that would have been really <laughs> awkward. The tobacco state. That's not Florida. Oh, that's, yeah, in, in uh, Virginia. Yeah. Tobacco state. Tobacco. You can get some tobacco. So some people say the anomaly is an underwater, underwater government base because it is so well shaped and it has the entrances and sometimes they light up. What was that show where that it was that um, sci-fi show where it was Sequest? Yeah. Uh, Sequest. Oh yeah. And then some people say it's an underwater NSO base, which um, is basically unidentified submersible object. Oh, it's so, like the opposite of a UFO. Yeah. It's underwater. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of. Oh cool. yeah, we need to cover that one time because there's some interesting stories about yeah, the yeah. fact that it's more likely that it's a submersible object that's in our ocean mm-hmm. than it is something that's flying. Than it's flying. Yeah, especially since Christopher Columbus has reported seeing these unidentified submersible objects actually fly up out of the ocean. Christopher Columbus. Like, you can't discount that. Yeah, when he was traveling across the ocean blue. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. He reported something new. <laughs> yeah. Or a kaiju. Uh, he reported something kaiju. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Because he said it was enormous. It, c- it was under all three ships. And it and was it lighting up. up. Yeah. And, I mean... Let's make a movie about it. Yeah. That'd be sick. I think they did. Probably. So here's something interesting that also goes into um, supporting like a time warp type thing. They call them ghosts on the radar. Lake Michigan has tons of ghosts on the radar. So O'Hare International Airport and the bases around there has reported aircraft ghosts on the radar. And it causes a lot of confusion because they just appear and then they disappear. Mm -hmm. But it's tons of aircraft. So the images appear and disappear without explanation. It's been determined that the ghosts, that the, I mean, that the images are not defects in the system. So from the time that they're reported seeing, they'll go and check, and it's not a, a system defect. Some theories suggest the images could be NSOs, like, coming up mm-hmm. and going flying into space, or it's the ghosts of old planes that have been lost in time. Some suggest the triangles could be einstein rosen bridges, which are interdimensional portals connecting our world to another point existing thousands of light years from the starting point used by aliens to come and go inst- instantaneously. So like, like a stargate. A wormhole, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and like Thor. Because remember, oh, yeah. that's right. remember in the first mm-hmm. one, Doctor, what's his face like? Yeah. It's like a Rosenbridge. Yeah, it's an Einstein Rosenbridge. So, and then you think about the Copper Island and there's a Stonehenge and a pyramid. All these things where these these anomalies take place all have the same series of things so in the bermuda triangle we found a stonehenge the pyramid i don't know if they found the copper island but you had the same weather reported with the mysterious bridges and stuff well, that co- appeared co- come on and just get a little dinghy go to like mission come on it'll be fun let's do it let's and by little dinghy what are we talking here like kayaks no something bigger than that okay no, like, like a canoe no like a boat and honestly one thing i didn't put on here but is people talk about seeing in Lake Michigan is um, a monster, the Lake Michigan monster. Oh, yeah. they said There's a, there's theories that um, a crypto, a cryptozoid mm-hmm. or whatever it's called, yeah. resides inside of Lake Michigan. Yeah. Kind of like how... Because he got stuck there. And we have one in Georgia, the Altamaha yeah. uh, monster, whatever it's called. Yeah, we should do Lake Lanier, to be honest. But Lake Lanier has its own monsters, and mm-hmm. it's called pollution. <laughs> I'm just going to put that out but there. But people disappear off Lake Lanier all the time. <laughs> really? Because, like, they just disappear. They're looking for, like, five people this year alone that's disappeared in Lake Lanier. But anyway, okay, bringing it back to aliens like I love to do. <laughs> so on June 24th, 2019, there had already been 34 UFO sightings on Lake Michigan. Holy shit. So the National UFO Reporting Center, which started in 1974, has a log that you can go on and check. And it's some people report the same UFO sighting. Some people, you know, it might be a solo Mm -hmm. site, but it's all different people from walks of life reporting it. People have reported the following. They've seen rectangular objects with bright lights on the left going straight into the clouds. Three objects flying in a circular pattern. Stationary globe shape with white, green, red and green lights. Four circular lights spinning at high speed. A bright light with a loud hum, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and a, a small circular disc-shaped object with red and green lights. And the color of the lights never changes either. So it's different people who don't know what the others have reported. 
white, red, and green lights. Now, this makes me believe it's not aliens because, you know, our commercial flights and military flights uses white, red, and green yeah. mm-hmm. to designate. So, And think about it. Like, if you think of other UFO sightings, let's talk about, like, or, like, associating it with, like, the Phoenix Lights phenomenon. They mm-hmm. talked about orange lights. Like, yeah. what was consistently seen in the right. w- most documented ones are orange lights. Right. And there was uh, someone on here who saw the uh, three orange lit aircraft in a V-shape. Now, those, to me, sound like UFOs, the three, because mm-hmm. it's the orange lights. But when you hear red and green, and you can look up in the sky right now and find an airplane at night with red and green blinking lights. So I know it's coming up out of the water, but it gives credence to that anomaly being a, a government base down there. Yep, makes yeah, sense. Or mm-hmm. something being tested where you can have something that can fly out and go back underwater. Yeah. Because think about it. Lake Michigan would actually, I mean, who? I mean, I know Lake Michigan is, is a lake, but still at the same time, it's a big it's a big place that's contained mm-hmm. where you can test things and not have to worry about it being yeah. in international waters. Right. Ooh. Ooh. Who remembers Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue? Barely, yes. Remember? Okay, so in that iteration of Power Rangers, their base is underwater. Ooh. And they send the Megazord and stuff up underwater into that. So what I'm saying is Power Rangers are real. Oh. And you know what the thing is like, um, could be. but you could not be off, you might I not wish. be off of it. But at the same time, like it kind of can have the same theoretical, mm-hmm. I guess the same basis if you think about it. Like if you have super soldiers or anything being created, you wouldn't want to create it in international waters because that's Mm-mm. how you start wars. Mm-hmm. You would probably want to put it somewhere where it's yeah, kind of it innocuous. To the US. It belongs yeah. to the U.S. And, and hell, we don't have to report it to the World Court or NATO or anything else because it's on U.S. soil. Oh, well, think about it. If you want to do something like test something like an aircraft, I mean, Megazords are a different, whole different anomaly itself. Mm-hmm. But if you think about it, if you can test something that's more sci-fi-ish, mm-hmm. why not do it Yeah, somewhere that's kind of like the ocean, but not well, the ocean? And when you consider, and I now remember what my new podcast topic I wanted, um, Hitler had already been experimenting with these type of aircrafts. Remember, he was super into the occult yeah. and creating U- UFO-looking ships. He had already created a saucer ship that flew and a submersible ship. So we took a lot of his scientists. It, it just stands to reason that we really do have this technology. And I, I don't blame us for keeping it secret because then you have to share it. More people who know about it. Like, put it in your back pocket for when you need it. (laughs) Yeah. Because right now, what do they always say that uh, the technology we have right now is, like, 30 years behind what they've already created? Mm -hmm. So, like, right, you know, tablets and all of that back in the 70s and 80s were already being used. Well, and I was reading this thing, and it said anything. Oh, Chicky hit the light again. Hello, Mm -hmm. humans. Welcome to a story time. (laughs) Kitty test was. With your host, Chicky. She records her own podcast for kitties. Oh, my God. Can Let me tell you a story wears. about a time when there were no cat gogurts. <laughs> oh, my God. No, so th- this thing said that what you read and see on sci-fi movies and books, in 70 years, you're going to have that futuristic technology. Yeah. At, at, at the maximum, it's going to be 70 years. So think of Star Trek stuff. Well, I was going to We s- had that. Yeah, Star Trek. And then if you think about Power Rangers, they powered up on their watches. Hello, yeah. smartwatches. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I'm all down for power. Same Rangers. as Star Trek with the yeah, yeah and the and yeah the, the tablets telecommuni- they use. Yeah, the telecommunication devices, yeah. all of that. All of it. I mean, we we have all of it. There was one season of Power Rangers where they used sunglasses as their morphers. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I kind of want that. Well, think about Iron Man. Like he had uh, different yeah. like wrist. He had watches and stuff right. that were created. It's not that out mm-hmm. of the realm of possibility that this has oh, happened. And the scientists at the Hedron Collider. Um, have now been able to move an object. Um, they've been able to teleport an object, not a lot, like two inches. Yeah. And they've been able to move an object back in time. So let's, I, I don't, the Hedron Collider scares me. I did turn down a job once at CERN. I wish I hadn't because I would love to know the scoop. I just like, I just like to think, okay, this is one of my theories, and I've said it before, mm-hmm. that religion, a lot of religious things, a lot of like, creation of gods and aliens and all that are just time travelers yeah it could be it's aliens and what well, maybe aliens are just time tra- well we know aliens are time travelers because they used einstein rosen bridges these wormholes i i fully believe it it's not even a doubt in my head i i, I think i can't remember where we were but somebody was like, oh it was a bigfoot conference and they said belief in something is different from wanting to believe a, a belief is feeling it completely not questioning you can question the how, but you don't question the existence. 
Actually, I forget what they said, but believe it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool thing. No, it's close. It never sounds good. Yeah. We went to Walmart. You know what? Well, you went. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. You didn't have to say anything. Me and Bobby, no. probably. Me and Bobby would have gone with whatever you said. Like, yeah, yeah that's exactly yeah. what they said. That's totally what they said. That's yeah. because you guys were like. No. Listen, okay, no. okay, no. Let, okay. The stick figure figuring out like a stick fell or a tree fell in the middle of the woods, and that's a a Bigfoot thing. That was the only thing I was like, this is a little sus for me. No, the only mm -hmm. panel I didn't like was the last guy because he was a little crazy. Okay, yeah, he was he was out there. Yeah, a little bit. Everyone else, the Mufon was pretty yeah, cool. The Mufon was my favorite one. Mm -hmm. I like that one. I know we need to do that. I mean, anything like that is really interesting. And the thing is, like, she's so reasonably normal that you're just like, she's kind of hot too. Yeah. Okay. And speaking about that, we <laughs> we're actually gonna go full circle talking about her. Not not exactly her hotness, but her theory <laughs> that the Bigfoots came after UFO sightings because in 1994. Lake Michigan had one of the largest UFO sightings. Hundreds of people witnessed on a 200-mile stretch of the Lake Michigan shoreline. UFOs rose up out of the water and hovered. I mean, it, it, it was filmed. It was like a convention. There was a, yeah. Yeah, they were came a, hey, how y'all doing? Hey, y'all, it's a UFO convention. It's a family How reunion. you doing? Oh, God. Hey. They came up. It was like a zoo. <laughs> Look at the human. They look so stupid. <laughs> but yeah, it was reported by policemen. There was a meteorologist who called in. Um, and then you had like your regular lay people call in. And so it came from everybody. And interestingly enough, a large furry creature was spotted in the area at the same time. Now, can you confirm it was Bigfoot or just a big furry? Well, there, um, when it read on, it, it, there were reports in Pennsylvania at the exact same time of Bigfoots. So I'm... Even though it didn't say this was a Bigfoot, I, I feel confident in saying it was a Bigfoot. I was just making a joke. I believe it's oh. Bigfoot. You're fine. I was just making a joke. I think Bobby's you talk about like, a, like, oh my God. Since we said up. it was a convention, <laughs> we're talking about a big furry, oh. like a furry convention. Oh, I get the jo joke. Oh, you're so Jacob. pretty. I got yeah, you, girl. Got it. Sorry, Bobs. I ruined that one for you. <laughs> I did. Everything gets ruined for me. It's fine. <laughs> 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 so, the, another interesting thing is that Lake Michigan. And um, Lake Huron has pyramids that predate the Egyptian pyramids. Now, to put this in perspective, the pyramids at Giza are older than the biblical flood. Holy shit. So when we think about, like, these, we think that, that the, you know, enslaved Jewish people built them. But no, yeah. these have already existed. So because aliens. Aliens. And, you know, there's been a lot of theories that these powered something that used to crisscross the world. Tesla theorized when he actually created his infinite energy that they, these things used to power it. But when he discovered infinite energy, which he, remember, he didn't say he discovered it. He said he would be visited and beings would put these put the thought, the knowledge in his head. Mm -hmm. He never credited himself with this, th what he called ancient knowledge. But what he couldn't figure out was how to harness all the energy because the infinite energy builds on itself. Yeah. So it would get to a point where it could. Critical mass. Yeah. And if you look at how pyramids are constructed, I'd be curious to look at the underwater ones, but like the pyramids mm -hmm. of Giza all align with stars yeah, in all the sky. Of them. Yeah. So what he's thinking is that the pyramids, especially the underwater ones with the salt water, somehow was able to contain and redirect the energy. So it would circle the world in, in power. So what he had was like rods that would come down in power. And it was interesting because he just needed, I think, he, he was going to follow the line of the pyramids. He was going to put these um, towers up around the world. And it would have been free, unlimited energy for everyone. And, of course, governments shut that shit down. How are they going to get your money if Oil you have is free the energy? True, true evil of the world. So he was shut down. When he was died and or assassinated, we're still not certain. All of his um, papers are paper yeah, gone. Yeah, fucking gone. Yeah, they took it. So nobody could do it. He also had a vehicle that he could power through using trash, which now they're starting to be able to recreate that. Even around here in town, you can see there's one truck that powers his uh, truck off trash. It burns it on the back, and it's a it's a clean burning thing. It's actually really interesting. It's actually pretty smart too, because yeah. what you're doing is using your waste to repower. Right, to power. It. It's and like a recycle recycling, but it, better. It really is because you completely burn it away, and then you're powering a, a vehicle at the same time, and you're using your own trash to do it. I truly believe Nikolai Tesla was assassinated. I want to mm -hmm. make a truck truck that's powered by poop. 
You know what though? I've heard you, there's there, like there a lot of one. yeah. There's yeah. a lot of theories. I would not test disgusting. Yeah, but well, it, have you purified it or you like mm-hmm. decontaminated well, it? Well, it uses the natural gases in it to power. Girls, you ain't seen how bad my poop is. No one wants to see that <laughs> okay. at all. I guess okay. I guess we're maybe some, nah, I get what you're like saying, sewage. Though. Maybe yeah. Thinking no. of sewage yeah. would be a more mm-hmm. appropriate yeah raw term. sewage. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. With a clothespin for my nose. Yeah. So ru- stinky Go cars. Ahead. Stinky cars. But with clean pew, burning pew. fuel. Exactly. I a question is clean burning fuel. Mm. What? And when they when they backfire, we call them farts. <laughs> oh yeah. I like I'm what you think, Bobby. Adorable. You yeah, that's a good one. Bobby's getting assassinated now, by the way. Yeah, it's <laughs> happening. He's they're like, he knows too much. They're gonna poison my hair products. Oh God! That would like, be th- he's like Snow White, the original Snow White story with the barrette. Maybe Chuki is actually reporting. There's bugs, and she's reporting into the light. She's the spy. Okay, they know we gotta kill him now. And she's actually a Russian spy. Oh, that's adorable. With her <laughs> little fur hat. Oh my God! A little the little commie hat. She is super fuzzy. Yes, it's time to assassinate my human. Yes, the humans must die at this point. Zvodka. <laughs> I like how Bobby went straight to alcoholism. Oh well, I don't know. Yeah, you're like, right. we think she's just cleaning herself. She's actually Morse coding it. Did she get stuck? <laughs> oh my God, she glitched out. She's, she, oh my she's, God. she's, she's rebooting right now. <laughs> she, what is happening? Did she fall asleep <laughs> mid cat bath? That'd be funny shit. Oh my <laughs> God, she scared me. She whipped her head around to look at Bobby like a damn horror movie. What you gonna do, Chuki? Okay, we I need to. For you. Speaking of Doritos. Speaking of Doritos, um, Rock Lake, Wisconsin, which falls just like inside, outside of the like Michigan Triangle, is full of pyramids, like full of them. Really nice. weird pyramids and rock formations. And um, there's a. Uh, okay, this is interesting about Lake Michigan. I didn't have time to do a lot of research on it, so I'm briefly going to cover it. Yeah, go for it. So uh, Lake Michigan Beach was has been closed for like 11 years because there was a kid who got buried under like 12, in, 12 feet of sand. It just suddenly collapsed on him. While they were looking for him, they found all sorts of metal objects buried under the sand. Mm-hmm. And like things they couldn't identify. So the sand comes up in a pyramid shape. So it just suddenly bottomed out and then collapsed on him. Like, it just fucking ate him. So they're like, is this where the ships are? Is this where the planes are? Like, what is with the sand pyramid thing? You know what, what got him? What is with the metal? A sandwich. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <sighs> dun, 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 dun. Chuki's like, never yeah, mind. Yeah, you have Chuki stuff. Like, like, he's never he's mind. too he's fucking like, stupid. Yeah, he's we, the, can't, <laughs> we can't report this to She's him. like, he's not a spy. He knows nothing. <laughs> Call off the attack. But it is a, it's kind of scary to think, like, even even more so, is, like, what is under under the earth that would cause that? Right. Mole people. Mm. Reptilians. Oh, here so we go. So mole people and reptilians have <gasps> teamed up, oh, and shit. they're going to crossbreed. Oh, fuck. Maybe they already have. Maybe that's what I am. I, I just, like, peel back my face. I got a mole nose, <gasps> oh, like, reptilian Jesus. skin. I wouldn't know whether to pet <laughs> you or run. He's cute, run. <laughs> that would explain so much. Oh, my God. It would. <laughs> that's why your penis is a tremor. <laughs> <laughs> it is a Speaking of penises. <laughs> oh, my God. It's but been uh, zero days since you mentioned Moreland's penis. It's been zero days. So... When are we planning our trip to Lake Michigan? I here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing. So you know what's interesting though too is that a lot of times they say that ley lines have passed through like these these areas pass through like different ley lines. That's another theory about it. Mm-hmm. And that one of the ley lines that pass through Lake Michigan also passes through Savannah. Oh, oh right. One of the the mm, perpendicular ones. Uh, yeah. No, uh, cool. Mm. Yeah, that thing. That's why. That's why. That it's, that's the savannah so haunted and shit. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's the theory is that you have more paranormal activity upon the ley lines than you do anywhere mm-hmm. else because if you if you look at where a lot of these areas are now, the Devil Sea has a scientific explanation. Nobody wants to fucking believe that shit, anyways. Um, but if you look at like the Bermuda Triangle and all that, they all pass through different ley lines. So, mm-hmm. is it just the energy in that area? Is it something like that? You know, something weird is going on. Okay, recently, Michigan Lake Michigan had a very rare like this is an extremely rare natural phenomenon where you get what's called a cloud tsunami so the water levels rose and a clouds formed a tsunami i mean people freaked the fuck out because they thought a tsunami was coming it was just a cloud formation 
it rolled across just like a big tsunami wave with the water levels rising with it. Well, what what the hell caused that? They don't know what causes Cthulhu. that. And there's been a lot of weird, like, cloud formations over Lake Michigan. Like, uh, really, really unusual ones. Ooh. Theory just popped into my head. Hear me out. Okay. The Atlanteans mm-hmm. used to worship Cthulhu. <gasps> but okay. then they stopped. And then, in retaliation, he underwater mm. well i mean if you think about leviathan the world eaters yeah swallowed it i mean how can you exist under the water without and we don't know we know more about space than we do our own ocean yep. i just want my atlantis lost empire with hp lovecraft mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. you can write i mean that would be a really interesting it would be an interesting theory to see what Mm-hmm. Where that where H.P. Lovecraft came up with a lot of these ideas. Speaking of crossovers, there's a, bo- a Sherlock Holmes book series now where it crosses over H.P. Lovecraft stuff. Now, that would be really yeah. good. Yeah, there's I a, saw it at Books a Million. We've got a new novels. RPG thing for Mansions of Madness where you oh, play cool. in a like a Cthulhu setting. Like oh, a sweet. Lovecraftian oh, we should totally do that. I've never played that game. Oh. What, D&D or... Or Mansions no, no. of Madness. Mansions of Madness. I played oh, D&D. Let's have a game night then. Yeah. Mansions yeah. of Madness is a lot of fun. It really, really is. Especially with a good game master. That smiley face creeped me the fuck out. Okay. Another thing about Lake Michigan is, remember, it's created by melting yeah. glaciers. So, you know, as they've gone deeper and deeper, um, there was some, I mean, you know, global warming. More has melted. They've been able to get to a lot more places in Lake Michigan itself. And they've discovered a really primordial bacteria. So, I mean, they're not quite sure what all the bacteria can do. It's got a lot of like interesting healing properties mm-hmm. it's ancient it's immortal they can't seem to kill it and it, they're gonna let it out so it's not the andromeda strain it very well could be I like we don't so. know that what book it was does. terrifying yeah well but then but there there's a lot of theories about what has been frozen it since the last ice age now that everything mm-hmm. is starting to melt again yeah is it like things that we can't survive because i mean look at like even like for example look at the native americans when the spanish came they mm-hmm. didn't have the immune system to fight off those right. bacteria that everybody else became right. immune and to. these bacteria, we don't have anything in our DNA to combat that. Yeah, we're just fucking dead. And that's how they mm-hmm. the half of the world goes extinct. Maybe yeah. that's why the UFOs are coming back yep. to come get mm-hmm. their peoples. What was that Pauly Shore movie where uh, it had the uh, guy frozen in ice? Encino Man? Yeah. It's yeah. Po- I won't be in that Pauly Shore movie. Yeah. And Biodome. <laughs> oh, Biodome. Oh, and Stephen King had a dome. Yeah, the, 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 under the dome. dome. The dome. Under the dome. That was a good book. The, the, show, the show was, and the yeah, book was really good. Yeah, Stephen King's books are amazing because what happens inside their minds is incredible. And then you get to the movies or the shows, and you're like, hmm. Yeah. I mean, how are you going to interpret their thoughts without narrating? Like, it's good because it's narrated. Well, uh, but they did have to cut out the whole, uh, you know, kid orgy scene. Thank like Christ. I couldn't handle that. It would be very uncomfortable. Becky's like, oh, God. Yeah. I know. Aww. So, yeah, but it is nice to see that it's just not the Bermuda Triangle that exists. It's all kinds of it's triangles. It's a lot of triangles. And it, I mean, there is a new theory now that Lake Lanier, even though it's man-made, could be becoming a, a Georgia Triangle. Well, I don't need any more triangle. We got some weird shit in Georgia mm-hmm. as it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We got a, yeah. what, what was our big fuck call again? Sassy Squatch. No, the other one. The, one the Belt Road Booger? Yeah, Booger. Yeah, we already got him. The Boogers. At, and we got the Windsor Hotel, which is supposed to be the most haunted hotel in fucking Georgia, apparently. Learned mm-hmm. that on Channel 4 News. Oh. Oh, really? Well, there's yeah. our next trip right there. And it's at least local. Yeah. Where is it? Atlanta? W- Windsor Hotel? Yeah. Yeah. Is it that where Dragon Con is? Part of it? No. No, I think it's outside of Atlanta, but it's in the metro area. Mm-hmm. Metrosexual? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it all goes back to Sassy Squatch. It all goes back to Skinwalker Ranch. Mm. Doritos. I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we Becky's all just stopped fucking, and looked at watch you like, start drinking water. Because we're Excuse me. thirsty. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good episode. Mm-hmm. Hey, Becky, where can they find us? Yeah. You can't find us in Lake Michigan. Maybe. I don't know. Angie, every we time we talk there. about this stuff, Angie always comes up with some random stuff like, let's go here. Let's go there. Let's go everywhere. We're just trying to travel the world and see spooky shit at the same time. All right. I don't want to mm-hmm. go anywhere that might cause me to disappear into a vortex. Yeah. Unless I'm in the other like side of this world, I'm like a super rich millionaire. Or a tiny little Asian girl. Aww. 
in a Japanese anime. But you can find us on the Facebook at the Free Rotation Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at the Free Rotation. You can Spotify. Find, find us on Instagram at the Free Rotation Podcast. <laughs> you can find us on Twitch and YouTube at the Free Rotation. What about SoundCloud. You can find us on SoundCloud and Spotify at. Wait, wait, no, I don't spot SoundCloud. You tricked <laughs> me. You, you got tricked it. me. I did it. I was thinking Stitcher. You got no. her. Oh. Spotify, not SoundCloud. Spotify. Oh, you got her. We also have a website. It's called thefreerotation.com. Angie said she was going to put some stuff up there, but I don't know what she was talking about. I got some stuff ready to go. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my. It's ready to go. Stop flirting in front of me, listen. moms. Hey, how you doing, girl? Hey, girl, mm-hmm. how you doing? Hey, and we're also affiliates of Weeby Geeks. Check out all the great podcasts over there at WeebyGeeksPC.com. And if you have any other really creepy slash ufo places you would like us to cover, let us know. This has been quite the educational rotation for me because I didn't know a lot about these places. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to go to Michigan anyways, and I'm definitely not going back and, now. And anybody who sends the most interesting tidbit will get my phone number. No, they won't. Why not? That's how you get catfished. And he said tidbit, not tidbit. So yeah, and that's I don't you can send him titties if you. I'm want. not getting catfished. It's 2019. It's real hard to catfish someone nowadays. Yeah, I got I get that premium subscription to white. Never pages. mind. I reverse that. Bobby's gonna catfish you. I'm a good looking. What the fuck are you talking? About? I don't need to catfish anybody. I'm great. He's looking. a good looking woman. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually from Skinwalker Ranch. <laughs> if you <laughs> pop boobs out, I would be so confused. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god speaking of boobs bye <laughs> <laughs> doritos of kitty titties oh my